Welcome back to Bible study and welcome back to chapter 5 of Isaiah and we're on to the third woe uh, and as I see it it's sort of ratcheting up the woes and so they all have a connection with each other but it seems to be getting more and more severe. So I think it's okay, it's a very short reading but um, Ian if you, if you read and then I'll pray. Uh, verses 18 and 19 of Isaiah chapter 5. Woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin as if with a cart rope that say, let him make speed and hasten his work that we may see it and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come that we may know it. Thank you very much. Lord, we just want to commit this time uh, to you. We ask that uh, we would speak the truth plainly, that we would appeal to um, the conscience of, of all the listeners here to this programme and that you'll also speak to us. And so we ask your blessing on our Bible study tonight. Amen. Amen. So here we are. The, um, we're talking about a picture again, Alan. Mm -hmm. um, in my version, it says those who draw sin along with cords of deceit. Yeah. Um, I think you just uh, you had the term vanity. Vanity. Um, in yours. Yeah. And alternative translations are emptiness or falsehood. Yeah. So it, it kind of gives a, a flavour yeah. of what the Hebrew word, you know, actually means. But obviously, it, it's talking about people again Isaiah is targeting different people groups mm. so the last woe uh, related to people who got drunk and was and reveled and uh, just listened to music and tried to just be you know uh, in, in, just have parties just partying out of the you know emptiness and no consideration for mm. God's work this group are people who draw or drag iniquity all right how it's with cords of vanity or cords of falsehood or mm. um, and sin so there's an activity sinning okay yeah. so sin is used in two different ways or it can be used in you know more than one way um, sin can be a misdemeanor I have committed a sin mm. and it's a noun in this context, it's being used as a verb. They sin, all right? They sin is, an, is a verb mm. and is a, an active verb. And it describes what they do. What are they doing? Yeah. They sin. So it's talking about people who draw, embrace yeah. iniquity. And in the process, they sin. It, it's an activity they engage in. Yeah. They sin. So shall I just say, you know, as I sort of read, uh, my sort of lens is, as it were, when I read the scriptures, is what, what's the really big picture? And so for me, that fits with the deceit, the falsehood in the Garden of Eden. You will be like God. Do this. Eat of the, the, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And you will be like God. That is a deceit. That's a vanity. That is a falsehood. Mm -hmm. And they were drawn along. It was, mm -hmm. is connected to this enticement yeah. and this seduction. Yeah. And the, the cart rope, I, I think, I, I don't know. Yeah. There, there, there may be more than one interpretation, sure. all right? But there is a contrast between cord yeah. and rope. And it's a matter of size or strength. And it's talking about the degree or the strength or the amount mm. of the sinning. Yeah. They sin as if with a cart rope, not as if with a cord yeah. or a string. They sin as if with a cart rope. So you, you mentioned ratcheting up. Yeah. So he's talking about very serious, overt sinning. Mm. That's where we are. Yeah. May, may I? Yeah. You may, especially as you put your hand up. Yeah. You know, we, <laughs> we, we you. have a rule here that you must put your hand up okay, if you want I'll to speak. Okay, I'll put my hand up yeah. and I'll say yeah. Verse 18 is, is suggesting 
those people who basically we've got people here who are sinning mm. right remember here he's talking to God's people mm. here he's not talking to unbelievers he's talking about people who are supposed to be God's people and so they're, they're, they're sinning they've got a car you could say they've got a cartload of sin mm. okay but now the verse 19 actually qualifies the sin yeah it's actually they're pretending that they're spiritual and they're actually saying let him make speed and hasten his work in other words God come back soon and mm. sort out this terrible world in which we I'm live blaming in blaming him for it and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come that we may know it in other words you have got these people who are actually hypocritically are actually sinning and yet pretending to be spiritual yeah, yeah. Uh, and and that's, that, that. that's a and that's the, the great deceit so yeah. it's not just a matter everyone sins yeah you know small large and you know yeah. sort of intermediate um, but it's drawing it's, it, it, it didn't say woe to those of you who sin yeah he said woe to those of you who who draw that sin along on cords of deceit yeah. so there, there's a sort of degree of sinning and then covering up let's yeah. say Achan yeah. you know he sins he takes the stuff from um, you know uh, AI buries it in the ground hides it yeah. Th there's a cord of deceit there yeah. woe yeah. to Achan yeah and there's I think also not negating anything that's been said but yeah. there's also another aspect of this which is that it is to do with hypocrisy yeah. they are positioned as perhaps a pillar of society somebody who goes to the temple regular and the sin is over there but they don't move towards the sin in case they're seen to be walking towards that sin. They're pulling that sin towards ah, them so like while nobody control. is, yes. yeah. nobody's noticing. Yeah, Very because good. they're still here. Yeah. Positionally good. wise, within the, 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 the ranks of society, yeah. they're still honorable men, yeah. but the sin is over there and they're just mm pulling it and, towards uh, them and another uh, uh, from from your verse 19 another element I see is defiance so it is saying it could be as you've uh, as you've interpreted it but it could also be defiantly saying let God let God hurry and let him hasten to his work so we can see it in other words God prove yourself prove yourself um, and it's defiance it, to him <coughs> testing him it goes yeah. back it goes it back to what we are saying about they have no knowledge and I think in a previous Bible study we talked about the responsibility that parents have mm. to impart knowledge mm. the knowledge of the Word of God I'm talking about I'm not talking yeah. about you know 2 plus 2 is 4 yeah. impart knowledge to your children yeah. is a biblical principle yeah. here here they're saying okay show me something that we may know it I want to acquire this knowledge yeah. not through learning not through reading your word yeah. not through hearing the word <coughs> but I want God himself to prove to me yeah exactly, exactly. to show me a miracle to show me a sign to show and it's, it's a bit like you it's know, the, the sin the, the, law, the Lord <coughs> is yeah, the sin presumption. of presumption Very good. you know let him it doesn't matter what the box is you know you can fill out your own X yeah. if you say let God do X that I may see it look at the arrogance of that mm. yeah exactly exactly yeah. let the council of the Holy One of Israel do something it doesn't matter what it is that we may know it how arrogant is that exactly. to put God exactly. on the spot and actually put us on the higher spot Absolutely. So we're actually passing judgment on God rather than him on us putting God to the test is the sin yeah. that Isaiah is talking about Some and the, the, the actual things that he sees um, accusing them of um, putting God to the test let him make speed and hasten his work in other words God's too slow yeah. I'm too impatient to wait yeah. exactly. how many of us have been guilty of impatience in the past you know to my shame mm. I would have to say yes me I, I'm recalling yeah. Stephen Fry mm. yeah I think it was last year where he assumed the position of judge yeah. um, uh, and said uh, and it was as it often is the references to suffering 
So why doesn't why does God allow suffering mm. in the world and all that? But his position was, how dare you? Because someone asked him, what would you say if you were face to face with God? And Stephen Fry said, how dare you allow this? How dare you create the world like this? And um, it's, I think, a similar um, line. Absolutely. And yeah. so the first one is, let God make speed and hasten. Yeah. We're fed up of waiting. We yeah. had enough of this. Yeah. Yeah. And if I have to wait one minute more, it proves God doesn't exist. Yeah. And Thank yet they don't much. know what they're saying, do they? They don't know what they're hastening. You know, what folly to be actually saying, God, bring your judgment forwards. That's effectively the end of it. It, it, um, it, it yeah. could, uh, it's amazing how, how yeah. you actually, when you, you discuss exactly. it, you see different, exactly. different um, sides of it. And, yeah. and you're quite right. It could be saying that. It could be, it could be actually hypocrisy, as I mm. said. It could be yeah. arrogance. It could be, say, and it could be the same sort of people like who are being ironic. You know, mm. they're, they're being ironic. Correct. You know the type of people who say, oh, you say God's coming in judgment. Let him come then. Yeah, exactly. Let him come. And, and to Jesus on the cross. Yeah, yeah come yeah, down, you yeah, know, yeah, the yeah. Christ. A, a sort of irony. Yeah. Uh, and and they're, they're not taking God seriously. They're, they're messing with God. Mm. Uh, and it could be that's, it's saying that. It's amazing, actually, how you've got you can verses see and you've got three different, scripture. all of them bad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> all of them bad. Yeah. And, and cynicism is one of the sins of this age isn't it I mean, definitely i mean i mean we even talk about critics we have critic you know we have theater critics we have football critics we have every type of critics people yeah. you know people who don't do anything criticize mm. and and the fact is okay let the plan of the holy one of israel come so we may know it actually it's staring you in the face. God, prove yourself to me. Well, you know, you've got creation all around. Yeah. Wake up. You've got a conscience. You're not an animal. But yet, in the blindness of arrogance, uh, ignorant arrogance, they say, where's God? I don't see God. You know, <laughs> there's no proof. I don't see any miracles. And, uh, and yet, it's only because of the hardened heart that you don't see it. Absolutely. Yeah. And the second uh, accusation against God, if you want to put it that yeah. way, is let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come. In other words, they're not prepared to go to the Bible. They're not prepared to approach the Word of God to find truth yeah. and to find knowledge. They're saying, God, you jolly well come to me. Yes. And then I'll believe, you jolly well come to me that we may know it. Yeah. I have no knowledge of God, but the only way I'm going to get knowledge of God is if He comes to me. Exactly. You know, is that kind and, of thing? and the Lord said, you know, to that type of person with that type of approach, you know, if your heart is wrong, you could have someone raised from the dead in front of you and you still wouldn't believe it. If mm. you've got that heart that decides I'm not going to believe it because it's not possible, let's say, and you've decided because of some scientific enlightenment mm. that it's mm. absolutely never going to be possible, then you'll find an argument against it happening, even if it's before your very eyes. 2 Peter 3, 4, they're saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Yeah. Arrogant impatience. Yes. That's what yeah. Peter That's is it. exactly a, a, you know, expressing. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. They deliberately forget. De so yes. they know, you know, there's something really devious and deceptive they, it, it, in a deliberate forgetfulness. And it's, it's, I, I would even go further and say it's because of this deliberate forgetfulness that they're able to sin. Yeah. Because it says, it talks about iniquity, you know, drawing iniquity with cords of vanity, sin as if it were a cart rope. If, if they weren't deliberately forgetful, how can you, if you don't forget God, mm. sin with this magnitude? It, 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 yeah. you know, the presence of God must push out yeah. sin. And yet they're allowing themselves to push out the presence of God yeah. in order to embrace sin. This, this is what Isaiah is talking what, about. What I love about the scriptures is, is it, it actually isn't black, just black and white. In the whites, we get all the colors of the rainbow and we get all of the beauty and the nuances. And also in the black, we can see that there's more detail to it. It's not just someone tripping over and bumping their nose, you know, as a sin. It, it's actually a detailed deceit, you know, that, that has created that. I remember years ago discussing, happened to be with a bishop, about this whole debate of, of the homosexuality. And he gave a very clever 
little sort of packaging of it as a gray area. And, you know, in other words, making it very um, unclear and murky and uh, very difficult to actually get your hand on it. And I, and I felt that that was just part of the deceit of yes. this argument. Mm. Because as it turned out, and I discovered later, this chap was, was a sexual predator. But he had managed to sort of, you know, with the cords of deceits, managed to weave an argument that, oh, it's a grey area and, you know, you've got to be, uh, you know, more considerate and compassionate. But actually, beneath it, mm -hmm. there were the cords of deceits. Well, deceit. this leads to the next world, actually. Yes. The next world. Exactly. Yeah. Which we can read. So it's your turn, isn't it, um, Ian? Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Yeah. So, and yeah, we're exactly going verse at a time, but there's so much in it. But that's just what you said. Yeah. You know, reading 18 and 19 led you to something yeah. that verse 19, uh, 20 is yeah. dealing with. Yeah. And it's yeah. now completely inverted. So, you know, even in the term, I um, apologise, and we always say, you know, this is a public channel and people can write in uh, and there are forums within Rev TV f to air you know, complainants, you know, in the other live shows. But there are, you know, the definitions of the words uh, uh, have, have become such that what the scripture says is wrong is now celebrated as something liberating and wonderful and the scriptures being negative and horrible and nasty. Um, it's an inversion of yeah. the truth. And the One truth is that you're sinful and you need liberating from the sin, yeah. not liberating from God's law so that you, so that you sin That's all the That's right. More. And one clear example of this is the Bible says quite clearly that child sacrifice is wrong. Mm. And yet you've got the pro-choice movement yeah. that says that women should be given complete you know, control freedom. over their yeah. uh, bodies and complete freedom to do what they like, including killing the unborn child. Yeah, that's right, mm. exactly. Who is a human being. And we did have a public debate. We had a public debate on this. So if you want to go on YouTube, you can see that we, we, we've aired in detail Both the, sides. the pro, so-called pro-choice arguments, yeah. which seems to be suggesting that that rights to, to end the life of the, the unborn reaches, because logically, it reaches to the point of full term of the pregnancy. Mm. Well, there's something completely unhinged about that because an instant later when the baby's born, suddenly it's a human being and it's murder. But just prior to that, because you're emphasizing this right to choose, you can actually end the life of this fully formed baby. So at that point, you realize that their argument is pretty fragile. Mm -hmm. And we yet, showed, it's celebrated. We showed this recently. Alan and I had a, a late show where we actually showed some clips of uh, pro-choice activists. And they were asked the question, you know, when does life begin? When does life yeah. begin? And, and they were so confused about the answer. And then someone else asked them, you know, where, when is the latest you can do That's it. a termination? And, and they were quite clear, these activists, right that away. That it's right to the end of the full term. But when they, were, when they were forced to think about it, you could see that they were uncomfortable. Yeah, it doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound right, yeah. but, they, but they, their own philosophy is driving them. And woe to them. Yeah, woe they, to they, them. They are making a virtue out of taking yeah. the life of the most vulnerable in society. And, 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 and with out, because I keep saying God is speaking to God's people. You know, well, Isaiah. Yeah. Uh, speaking God's word to God's people, and and it's really easy to point the finger at these obvious mm. sins in our society. And they're all happening in the church. And they're all happening in the church. But I, I think what um, would be helpful is to understand how we got here. Mm. And I think how we got here was actually through a clergyman called Joseph Fletcher. Mm. And Joseph Fletcher came up with a set of morals called situation ethics right. and he came up with this it was in the 1950s right. and he came and he says I don't like this objective code which we have the Ten Commandments because there are so many complicated situations which don't really mm -hmm. where it doesn't apply so he says we need situation ethics and what he said was that God is a God of love 
going back to a comment mm. I made in the last study, you know, yeah. we mm. forget about the righteousness and justice. He says, God is a God of love, then actually we can do anything we wish if, it's, if love is the objective. For, for, for example, I, can, I may have been married to my wife for 10 years, 15 years, but if I love someone else, the loving thing to do would be for me to follow my heart. Um, or, or, you know, uh, it may be that I may steal. And, and they say, well, if I'm stealing to help my family, Mm. and support my family. Well, that's obviously the loving thing to do. Yeah, so they're making good right. wrong and, 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 and wrong and right. And you, you end yeah. up with a distortion of right and wrong yeah. and light and darkness. And what we're actually finding, what I find now is in my ministry is very, very slowly and surely this has worked its way into the church. Mm so that there are no givens, there are no objective truth, it's all subjective. Yeah. It's what you believe it to be. Yeah. And this subjectivism is actually destroying uh, you know, the life it's, of the you church. Know, as soon as you let it in. It's Absolutely, gross. and again, the Bible, inspired word of God, mm. you know, you would expect this, um, actually portrays that progression, Ian, that, <clears throat> you start off with those who call evil good and good evil. The next step that you mentioned is who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Now, the thing about light and darkness is these are external to ourselves. Mm. It's an objective test of whether something's light or darkness, and yet they've inverted it. Yeah. But the problem is as soon as you've inverted an external objective truth and called darkness light and light darkness, you then uh, begin to rely on subjective feelings. Yes. And the subjective feelings are who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Now that has become internal. It's inside your mouth now yeah. and it's a subjective taste yeah. that has got inverted. Yeah. So the whole thing, you start with calling good evil yeah. and evil good then you get blinded because you can't see the light and you think it's darkness, you see darkness, you think it's light, and you end up with a subjective approach to life yeah. Yeah. that leads to death. It doesn't say that, but yeah. w once you become subjective, yeah. then you can say, ah, yes, but something may be sweet for you, but it's bitter for me, therefore there's no argument. Mm. And that's where we've got to. And you're deluding yourself. So it's these cords of deceit again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, before you know it, you, you, you may be achieve, thinking that you're achieving some inversion, but in the end, it will self-destruct. I, I can almost, You'll I can yourself. almost hear the people tapping their Good. keyboards well, now. Hope, hope and, actually, and what about Jesus when he, uh, he the, the law actually said that a woman taken in adultery should be stoned. That, that, yeah. The law was yeah. quite clear about yeah. this. Yeah. And yet he said, let him without sin yes. cast the first stone. Yes. Isn't that subjectivism? Well, I'll just tell you well, in answer to that, this is absolutely crucial. And for me, it's central to today's debates on the subject I've mentioned. And it's this, that he said, let he who is, a, who is without sin cast the first stone. In other words, he did not change. He did not say sin was not sin. He just addressed the issue of hypocrisy and said, let he who is without sin cast first stone, and then went turn to the lady in compassion and said, go and sin no more. So that um, objective external reality of sin was not changed at all. It was how the Lord dealt with the sinners, the, the hypocrites and the penitent lady, who obviously was caught in adultery. And by the way, he wrote in the sand, you can, you can sort of guess what he wrote, but I would surmise that it was something to do with those accusers because he convicted them, mm. possibly by noting all those who had slept with the woman 
And this is the point about it. People are hiding with cords of deceit what they're actually doing and then accusing someone else to distract attention from their own failings. So that convicted them and not one of them picked up a stone. But then he turned in compassion. But the crucial thing that all of these modernizers within the church have to recognize is the Lord never redefined sin. He never um, understated it. Equally, he didn't elevate one sin over another. And this is what we're being accused of. We're say, some are saying that we say um, that so one category of sin is particularly worse than the other. We're not. But others are saying that category of sin is less than being sinful. Whereas the Bible is very clear, sin is sin. Don't invert it and say that it isn't. And, and of course, and great, ex great answer. Yeah. What I would actually say is that we've come to a point further where we actually don't talk about sin now. We talk Correct. about mistakes and yeah. errors of judgment. Yeah. Uh, and, and really, it is, and people get, feel up, get upset when we talk about sin. And it doesn't matter that we say all of sin, including myself and you, uh, that we've all, not Alan, <laughs> Funny guy. <laughs> but, 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 uh, yeah. but all have sinned. And, and, and it's not about making mistakes. It's not about errors of judgment. It's about doing wrong. It's, it's fundamental. It's Light fundamental. and darkness. You can't mix. But what, what, what you're saying is very helpful mm. in that what you're saying is that Jesus was condemning the hypocrisy, but he was not changing the sin. He That's was causing it. sin. Because otherwise we are in a complete moral quagmire. Correct. There is yeah. no possibility, you know, situation ethics or with any other yeah. philosophical model, if you don't have a reference point of what is right and wrong, it's completely it's a movable feast so, so, every time someone sins. And, and that's sins. what we found. So what we found is we started with abortion and they said, oh, we, you, it'll be fine, you know, and they came up to produce. I, I was around in 1967. I was mm. quite young, but I can remember the debate. And there was a, there was a documentary called Kathy Came Come Home. That's right. And in that documentary, what it showed is someone who was living in, you know, having, in other words, an abortion. The backstreet abortion. Yeah, a, ba a backstreet abortionist, and they, they pushed the backstreet abortionist and, and all sorts of things like that. So then people said, well, yes, this seems sensible now. So we passed that law, and we had very strict guidelines. Now, what we find within a very short period of time, basically, the, the, the criteria which is often used is where the woman, the, the health of the mother is threatened. And that is a subjective decision, really. It's become a so. But that's that is actually that, that's a been. fair discussion, but not where it's headed to now. No, you've that, got exactly. this gender selection and all the rest. That's of it. exactly what, yeah. what, I, what I'm saying is is that you get there and you move it, because it's it's you've moved away from the objective laws of God, mm. right? And you move there, so you're there now, and you move it a bit further, yeah. Uh, and and we'll end up having eventually full-term abortions. So the pretext, co the cords of deceit yeah. was, oh, we must stop the backstreet abortions, which, you know, are terrible, yeah. but a fraction uh, of what we have opened up. I, and it still uses the justification, yeah. and yet it's probably one in, yeah. uh, you know, I don't know, a million. Well, I mean, they all, it's they all, there's an old legal adage, which he know, it says hard cases make bad laws. That's right. And most of the laws which have been passed in this country uh, in the last 50 years have been based upon a tiny minority of hard cases. And I think, actually, if Christians were given the opportunity now and said, OK, we'll agree to the hard cases, but no further, I think there would yeah. be that. Mm -hmm. But what has happened is, is that you go, and it's exactly the same with Which you. is where I may upset people on this, like, this is where I am. Yeah. I think that there are, there's, there's got to be uh, exceptional cases Absolutely. if the life of the mother is, um, yeah, is threatened. You know, then, then you're making the sort of balance of Solomon's decision. Yeah. You know, you're, you're using wisdom to decide. Yes, I know, but the pro-choice people aren't content of to draw the line where their arguments lead them. So, if their argument says the life of the mother, fine. Even if, uh, you know, we uh, say, yeah, fine, let's concede. Then they'll say, oh, what about rape? So we say, yeah, we'll concede. Yeah. And they won't stop. 
that's the point. Because they're, they're even if we even if we say right, let's let's draw the line here with rape. Let's draw the wh wherever we draw the line. It's not enough. It should be on demand. That's what they're aiming for, and that's where the, that's where they that's where they're going, and that's where. And it's fe and there's this sort of. I know it's three men sitting here, but there is this feminist stream you see that you just you can just be liberated sexually. You can have control of who you sleep with, and there's no responsibility connected to it. And it's it, it it's led to a lot more than just the, the killing thing, of the children. The sad thing is the sweet and the bitter. Yeah, they're saying that giving the woman the right to abort for any reason. Never, I'm not talking about rape or health or anything. I mean, this is just, just any reason they're saying is sweet yeah. but the reality is it's bitter yeah. Yeah. because afterwards she has to live with that for 20 years mm. 40 years mm. and how many cases where it's absolutely bitter for the woman yeah. something that was meant to be sweet that's right is not and yeah. this is what it's talking about I mean it, we're seeing the same process in euthanasia yeah. moving along mm. But bringing it down Again, to... the most vulnerable. most vulnerable. Uh, but we actually also see it in, um, for example, uh, people fiddling their expenses. Mm. At work, they'll say, well, they can afford it, and I work really hard, so I'll fiddle my expenses. You f uh, and you, you, yeah, justify, you justify it. Yeah. You justify it all the time. Yeah. You and, and once you take objectivity out of your moral code... It's politics. It opens up all sorts of uh, yeah. issues, and pretty soon you find yourself calling right. I've even had, believe it or not, I've had a, a, a woman come to me justifying leaving a husband, uh, leaving a family, and going to another p a man because I love him and that's I don't it. love him that's anymore. It. That's it. And, and that's where we got. And, she, and do you know what? Yeah. They went along with a couple to yeah. the, the church down the road and they start went as a family and the church yeah. said oh isn't it wonderful what a yeah. lovely little family yeah. and they don't know the mess I they've know. left behind there yeah. and that's the mess we're getting yeah. in as a church with all this subjective morality that's it and also using sort of political arguments so it's not we're not talking yeah. about global politics party politics in westminster we're talking about m m creating a little political argument yeah. that that tweaks what god has said yes. and before you know it it's, it starts that you just tweaked it, you know, to another angle, but you eventually becomes inverted, which is where we've got it here. The classic example is Joseph and Potiphar's wife. I mean, Joseph could have calculated and, and made a political argument that, that, that it's going to be, I am going to be able to fulfill God's um, plan if I use the sleeping with Potiphar's wife to get influence with Potiphar, to get influence with Pharaoh, and the end justifies the means, surely. That's why the Lord's put me in this position. But he says, no, how, can I, how could I do such a sin against God? And that's basically it. There is no wiggle room to negotiate or, or politicize the act. You, you yeah. either take a political view or you take a spiritual view of obedience. Mm. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, that, you know, we've talked a lot about sin, but the point is we shouldn't apologize because... The word sin is in the Bible. Yes. And therefore, whatever's in the Bible, I'm very happy to speak out about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a Bible study. Yeah. Yeah. As Paul said, it's in the context of communion. I, I, I'm, I'm passing on to you what I've received. Yes. So all we're doing is seeking to be faithful with what is in, is in here and, yeah. and makes, not pretending. And we, we, of course, when Christians do this, they will be labeled as being bigots, Fanatics. homophobes. Islamophobe. But go back to the, the Lord and his compassion, speaking the truth in love. It's, we, well, but, I mean, well, well, people can call us what they want. I'm, well, but we just got to seek to be faithful and get on with it. That, that's, that's exactly, <laughs> yeah. that's exactly. Yeah. If we want to be popular, don't be a good Christian. <laughs> <laughs> At least not in these days. But don't day. give them any cause, as yeah. it were, yeah. um, other than what's in here. Because yeah. often, because, because of our personalities, yeah. and, and there are bigoted Christians, there are judgmental Christians, you know, there are Christians who misbehave. We don't want that to be the reason for folks to reject God's word. And has to be said there's probably more hypocrisy in the church than there is outside the church so that's another reason mm -hmm.
Okay, so verse 21. Should we do a verse 21? 22. No, no, we take it on its own because it, it, that can stand on its own, can't we? Okay. So I read, woe yeah. to those, woe to those who are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. Yeah. Where do we go with that? Because it's so clear, isn't it? That, it, it there's it, the it woe. Is, it is so clear. But this takes us way back into Genesis. Isn't that? I mean, you're saying that everything is ratcheting up. It's getting yes. worse and worse and worse. Each woe yeah. is getting yeah. worse and worse. Yeah. So why is this worse than the previous one? Yeah. Well, the previous one is, sub is, is being subjective. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But this one, this one goes back to the heart of what yeah. Genesis is talking about when Satan said, eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good Very and good. evil. Very good. That's the point. Yeah. God didn't say eat of the knowledge, eat, 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 eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm. Satan said it. Yeah. Now, if Satan says something, mm. okay, there has got to be something behind it. Mm. There has to be an a ulterior of deceit. A cord of deceit. An ulterior motive. Yeah. And Satan's ulterior motive, he actually said it. Mm. Because you will be like God. Yeah. You'll be wise. You will be wise and you will be like. Yeah. And this is the thing that Isaiah is talking about. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes. In appearance to themselves. Yeah. And prudent in their own sight. Yeah. And this is swallowing, all right? The lie. The lie, what Satan has fed yeah. to mankind. And you're either going to operate in the realm of what Satan has fed to you, mm. or you're going to operate in the realm of what Moses gave them. Yeah. And we're talking about Old Testament times here. We yeah. can apply it to the New Testament, yeah. fine. But for, for this, for the purposes of Isaiah talking to yeah. uh, That's it. The, uh, Judah, the children of Israel in Judah, and there's, he's there's giving them a, a stark choice. Yeah. Either go with the law of Moses or go with the gift of Satan. That's right. And, and there is a difference between being wise and being wise in your own eyes. Oh, yes, you know? yes, and, yes. And so you think, and this is Babel, this is the whole story of the aggrandizement of man, that he's wise in his own eyes. He's, he's got knowledge, but he doesn't actually have wisdom. Mm. He, he's, he's had access to the, the uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but he hasn't exercised wisdom to choose between good and evil. He's just yeah. got the knowledge of it. So yeah. wisdom is actually making the right choice. Yeah. It's not just having the knowledge. I think sometimes we confuse the issue a little bit mm. by talking about the fall. Yeah. Now let me explain what I mean. The sin of Adam was not the fall. The sin of Adam was wanting to rise, wanting to be better. Yeah. To become as God. But in so doing, he fell. Uh, well, he fell from, from grace. Well, he fell. Yeah. Well, he fell from where God yeah. wanted to be. But yeah. what? I, what? I, w the reason I'm saying that is not to make a pedantic no. point and yeah. one of these preachers' clever points, yeah. but actually to to what, one of the lo lots of Christians can resist temptation. They can resist falling into adultery, resist pornography, resist thieving, and all sorts of things like that. And what happens so often is ambition mm. uh, gets the better of them. That's and it's, so. it's, it's ambition that causes more Christians mm. to, to actually fail in the yeah. Christian life than actually those obvious mm. sins. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's really to do with being wise and arrogant and proud in our mm. own eyes. That we're better, yeah. we're better than we... But it's a good point about the, the rising, because that, you know, in Isaiah 14, it was very much, yeah. I will be like the Most High. I will ascend to the Holy Mount. Mm. Yes. It's trying to usurp God's position. That's Satan doing it in the ultimate, but he's trying to basically get everyone to do it in yeah. their own eyes. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's... let's uh, let, uh, I'd like to read out what God said, right? Oh, now, Sa Satan, <laughs> Satan said quite yeah. a few things, yeah. and it's in the Bible. Yeah. So we need to understand it. Yes. So Satan spoke to Jesus, so we need to understand the words that Satan used. Yeah. Satan spoke to Adam and Eve, so we need to understand the words that he used. Yeah. But for the purposes of this all right, yeah. uh, discussion, I'd like to read out the words that God used. Good. 
So this is in Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And this is what Isaiah is talking about because they're wise in their own eyes. That's they're right. using this very thing. Yeah. And this is what caused God to say, leave yeah. the tree of life. He says, and now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. Yeah. It was a preventative measure, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it, therefore, it is not in God's eyes, is not compatible with a man who is wise in his own eyes to live forever. That's he doesn't right. want that. Exactly. He but is God is and he's not, he's not going to stand for a situation in which a man is wise in his own eyes and he has eternal life. That's not going to happen. It would be a disaster. Absolute yeah, disaster. It would be a disaster for the individual concerned and for everyone else. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. Because it is the pride, the arrogance, you know, if, if God opposes the proud, gives grace to the humble. Which is, you know, which is why I think we do need to draw attention yeah. to how serious this is. It's just one verse, all right, a yeah. couple of lines. Yeah. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. And then he goes on to a different woe. He doesn't even talk about the con There are other woes that he talks about the consequences and what's going right. to happen That's and right. this and that. Yeah. Here, yeah. he just deals with it just like that and stops yeah. and then moves on because to God is that serious. Yeah, yeah. To be right. autonomous of God, to be independent of God, that is the great yeah. um, fall. I, I'm trying to, uh, we use that phrase wise in our own eyes yeah. and we all know, yeah. we all think we know, the under, understand mm. what it means, but what does it mean? Well, we well, just need to be looking to God for our wisdom so, and then we're not wise in so, our own so, eyes, so, so, looking beyond yeah, ourselves. Right, okay. It means that we look beyond our own experience, mm. and that goes back to the previous verse, cause good, bad, and bad, e good, yeah. and evil, good. Go beyond subjectivity. Go, go beyond subjectivity. Mm. Look beyond ourselves and, and, and look outside ourselves. As it says in Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning That's of right. wisdom. That's right. Uh, so, how, does, how do we become wise? That's the thing, the fear of the Lord. So it needs to be anchored, you see, because in a previous discussion, you asked about how do we acquire knowledge? Yeah. How do we acquire wisdom? And I think we covered the fact that they're two different things. Now, when it comes to knowledge, God's expectation is that we will go and acquire that knowledge. Yeah. That's yeah. okay. He expects that our parents would impart it to us. That's okay. We would read the scriptures and obtain knowledge. That's okay. We can grab hold of knowledge, it's essential for life. Yeah. But when it comes to wisdom, he is insistent it comes from him because then he says the fear of the Lord yeah. is yeah. the beginning of yeah. wisdom. And Proverbs, it just talks about how wisdom originates from God. And if it's in our own eyes, if it comes from somewhere other than God, yeah. Then it is be, totally incompatible yeah. it, with it, eternal life. It will create an opposite effect. Yeah. If you read Proverbs, you, you know, if you just read it, and mm. I would suggest pe the viewers actually read it as a book, and just yeah. when it talks about wisdom, it almost talks about wisdom in it as a, as a, as a person. Yes, that's right. And I think that's deliberate because what it's actually saying is that. God is wisdom. Right. And if you want to be wise, know God. Yeah. And that person is outside of us. Absolutely. It doesn't come from an internal so, thing. So, no. so, you know, so, so how, how do we make wise decisions in life? You know, and I've seen so many unwise decisions <laughs> in life. Took a few unwise decisions myself, truth is not. But how do we take it's, it's to do with being rooted in God. Mm. Mm. You know, it's, it's about not suddenly deciding that I'm going to go in this direction impetuously. Yeah. But, but taking your time, praying about it. Yes, reading the scriptures, 
asking for advice yeah. from from god, godly people yeah. you know it, and, it, and oh, in the ultimate sense you know in the, the pauline gospel it's yeah. by having faith in god yes. for our righteousness yes. so the danger is even in church circles that you know we can be building up you know righteousness by works but yeah. uh, paul paul illustrates it most powerfully in chapter three of romans where, where he says there is no one righteous no mm. not one and then he says their throats are open graves their tongues practice deceit the poison of vipers is on their lips their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. The way of peace they do not know. And then he says, there is no fear of God mm. before their eyes. Yeah. Now that was all in the context of the depravity of man in his own strength or being wise in his own eyes. And then he said that about the law being given so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. So that is the solution. The solution is actually faith in the righteous God. And through that faith, righteousness is credited to us. And there's no other mechanism for righteousness to be credited yeah. other than by faith. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know, the problem we have today is that the faith has been completely rejected and mm. everything else by whatever means or mechanism is, um, is, has taken the place of faith and faith is ridiculed and they say, well, you know, how can you believe this, this and this and this? But there is no other way to salvation, to being liberated from this body of sin other than through faith. How, how do we, I, I guess, in the church you go to, in the yeah. church, not, not so much the church I go to now, but yeah. in churches I've been in before, there are certain people whose lives are chaos. And they, they, yeah. they, they own the name of Christ. And they say, why is that? What's happening? Why aren't they able to take good decisions? What's going on? Is they it, become uh, detached from God. It, 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 yeah. it's, 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 it's really, a, it's spiritual, isn't it? It's not, Absolutely. It's, it's not a question of, let's go to the pastor and he'll tell me what I've got to do. Because you can't be you, quite sure you, nowadays. You, you can't, yeah, well, in your day, a pastor of your caliber, then maybe. <laughs> well, well, no, I, I wasn't actually told about that. No, no, I'm, no. I'm saying, even if even if you've got a good pastor who I tells know. you what to do, that won't affect they can't. the decision down the road and another decision. You can't just yeah, keep David going. And David can't fight in Lord, in Saul's armor. Exactly. Yeah. You, you've you've got to de develop. And and I, I when I see all the chaos, there's chaos out there, but there's a lot of chaos in people's lives. Yeah. And and yeah. The, 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 and I think it, it really is about the fear of the Lord and relationship with the Lord. Okay. Do we have time for another woe? Yeah. The, well, well we're, I think so. It depends if we stop at 23. We probably do have time for another woe. Okay. Can we okay. woe right. forwards? Uh, verse 22. Woe to men, mighty at drinking wine. Woe to men, valiant for mixing intoxicating drink, who justify the wicked for a bribe and take away justice from the righteous man. Yes. Mm. Now, the, the first verse, uh, mighty at drinking wine and valiant for mixing intoxicating drink, is reflective of something that was said before. Yeah. What rise early in the morning that they may follow intoxicating drink yeah. uh, and continue until night. Yeah. But this must be something different. It is, I don't think that Isaiah mm. is repeating the same point he made previously. Yeah. I think this is of a different order, mm. okay? Because, I say that because it's talking about who justify the wicked for a bribe. Yes. Why is this the last and therefore the most serious? Yeah. Whoa. Why yes. is this worse than anything else? Shall I answer? I've just, a li just one little insight and it's, it's uh, there at the end of chapter one of Romans, where it says that even though they know that these things lead to death, they not only continue to do it, but they approve, they seduce, they encourage, they bribe others to practice it. So these are heroes at drinking wine. These are champions. These are leaders of the evil, you know, horde against God, whereas others are sort of followers, they're rising early, they're chasing after something. Um, and of course, they are to be pitied uh, uh, greatly, but those, those who are leading others into evil are to be condemned. 
And that's right. And the other thing is that, so, you know, for example, if we go back to the previous woe, there are those who are wise in their own eyes, but it only affects their own lives. You could be imprudent. You can live a chaotic life. You know, you could drive your car into a tree. It affects you and your car, okay? You could be that stupid. Yeah. Here, it's talking about those who justify the wicked for a bribe. It's talking about those in positions of authority, either a judge, because Jesus talked about the unjust judge, okay? Or an official, police, anything of that nature, where I would say media they're taking a bribe and so they justify the wicked in other words there's a court case and you're a judge and one is guilty and one is innocent but the guilty one has given you a bribe yeah. you pocket the bribe and you say the, the the innocent one is the guilty one yeah so the wicked the guilty one is let off yes who justify the wicked for a bribe now the, pr the point here is authority comes from God and they're abusing that authority. Yeah. And it's got to be worse than, all right, personal sin where you crash your car into a tree. This is actually yeah. going against God's nature in the name of God, in the sense of authority comes from God. Yeah. And therefore you're in the place of God yeah. and doing something that is yeah opposite of what God would do in those circumstances. Yeah. And it is part of a continuum with, with the deceits, the cords of deceit. Bribes are deceitful. They're yeah. hidden, they, they're, they're dishonest, they're unfair. It's, yeah. it's all part of a continuum, but it, it is getting to an extreme where you're corrupting others. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, what we're seeing here is actually this whole verse 23. I think verse 22 is a little self-explanatory but verse uh, verse 23 is interesting and it, what it is actually saying is that you actually rationalize justify wickedness because you're benefiting from it you get you're expecting to get a bribe now and uh, you see this in politics today don't you Big you, time. Know, you see it in politics today where where you where you actually, if you're a politician and you, for example, you want that politician, you, make promises. Rich, you want a rich, if you want a rich man to support you, this rich man might have a lifestyle you don't agree with, but you just overlook that because you're getting a, yeah. a benefit from benefit, it. It yeah. might be a financial yeah. benefit or yeah. some other benefit. It may be in a, in a church situation where, where you know that someone's, uh, lifestyle you ought to say no this is wrong but because you get a benefit from it yeah, you don't condemn it so that's the, the, the uh, problem so, with yeah. a bribing bribery is it corrupts the briber and the, the bribee yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. letting off the wicked is the, the first part and the second part is taking justice away yeah. from the righteous man yeah. Yeah. yeah you know so a righteous man comes before you yeah. and because you've taken a bribe from the other side, yeah. you side with the, with the wicked man yeah. in opposition to the righteous man. Yeah. And in God's heart, that's got, to, you know, that's got to be the most serious of the woes, because I, I believe what, you know, uh, with you, uh, Tim, that it's getting ratcheting, it's ratcheting. Yeah. Each one is worse than the previous one. Yeah. So there we are. I think we're done. We're done. Can you believe we got to the end of the woes? I, I almost thought, well, it's good for us to read it again, but I think we rammed it. Uh, pretty well home and we can end by just saying as we always seek to do on the bible study here um speak the truth in love mm -hmm. speak the truth in love don't Amen. don't do this sort of piecemeal mealy mouthed you know you know breaking down of the truth and diminishing it until it's repackaged and not isn't the truth anymore just speak it as it is but speak it with the right compassionate heart so Look forward to seeing you next week. We're, we're still not through to the final woe, which is in humility before God, saying, woe is me. But we'll get to that, hopefully, in a few weeks' time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ian and Alan.